You're listening to ADHD Support Talk Radio. ADHD Support Talk is brought to you by addclasses.com. Visit www.addclasses.com for helpful online events and resources today. I want to welcome you back to ADHD Support Talk. I am your co-host. I'm Lynn Idris, and I'm a productivity and ADHD coach. So I help overwhelmed professionals take control of their time and take control of their lives so that they can have the freedom and the fulfillment they want with more time, energy, and even money for what matters most to them. So I am a woman with ADHD myself, guys, so I get it. I've been there and I've done that. And I often say that I've kind of come out the other side to living a life of more fulfillment and success than I once dreamed was possible. And I believe that that is possible for you as well. In whatever form you want success, I believe that you can have it. So you can learn more about me and what I do and the programs and services I offer at www.coachingadvantages.com. Today I have with me Heidi Fishbane, and we're going to talk about a really interesting and I think a really important topic in a moment. We're going to talk about living on purpose with ADHD. So welcome, Heidi. Thank you for having me, Lynn. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. Tell our listeners a little bit about you. Um, tell them where they can learn more about what you do. Get in touch with you if they'd like. Yeah, thank you for that. So I am a certified ADHD and Christian life coach. I'm also a coach trainer. So I have the privilege of training up uh, new ADHD coaches. I'm also the assistant director of training at the International ADHD Coach Training Center. Uh, in my private practice, I have the privilege of partnering with women and families and helping them discover themselves unearth their strengths, their giftings, their talents. I work through a holistic approach that brings clarity, awareness, um, all in that path of their personal uh, growth. I truly believe that everyone has a light within them and they are naturally born with all the qualities that they need to solve their own problems and create strategies that help them move forward in their life. This is partly why I'm so excited and thrilled today to be talking about and having a conversation about living life on purpose with ADHD. Lynn, I know that you are a woman as well with ADHD, um, as am I, and I know a lot of our listeners are are as well. So I think we can all kind of relate to this topic and the impact that it can have on our lives. So you can find more about uh, who I am and what I do at lifecoachheidi.com. I have so many free resources and tools and my favorite thing to do is create workbooks. So you'll find lots of workbooks on my website. So take a stop by and feel free to download those workbooks and get started. Awesome. Awesome. Well, tell our listeners a little bit about like, I think a good place to start, Heidi, would be what do you mean by living life on purpose? Yeah, yeah. I think what comes up for me when I when I think of this living on purpose with ADHD is this sense of awareness of who we are and how we show up in the world and really being intentional about learning about our uniqueness. One of the things about the experience of ADHD is it is so unique to each individual person. It has a lot to do with our strengths, with our talents, with our interests. So that presentation is a lot different, right? So having that awareness behind what's driving my choices and my decisions and the things I do in life. So really that intentionality of figuring out and discovering who you are. Yeah, all of it, right? The good, the bad, the ugly, right? And accepting it all. I mean, I think that that, I think that that's huge. And, you know, that's, it's a journey. (laughs) Absolutely. So intentionality and awareness about who you are. Mm, Yeah. And, and how do we do that? Right. It's easy to kind of, to hear that, right, like, let's be intentional about who we are, and we're all different. And I think we've all heard that at some point. But how do we dig into that? How do we truly find out what makes me unique? And I think a lot of our experience with ADHD, number one, can be this fast paced catching up. Yeah, yeah. Coming up from behind, right? (laughs) Feeling like we're just falling behind in the world, right? And we're just like catch up where we're not really stopping and figuring out who am I? What yeah. are my values? What are my interests? Right. And and we can take this, this stance of this masking. Yeah. Right. Oh, Especially, absolutely. Right. We talk uh, a lot about masking in the ADHD world. And, you know, if I'm going to let you explain masking, if you would, Heidi, go ahead. I mean, I think that, that 
most of us with ADHD have an inclination of what that means. But if you've never really heard anyone talk about masking, can you tell our listeners a little bit about how you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So it's this, this sense of hiding or suppressing yeah. our symptoms. Yeah. And what can happen is, is over time of doing that, we kind of lose this sense of who we are and yeah. what we value and what's important to us. And we can tend to just kind of be a chameleon and take on the importance and values of those around us. Right. Yeah. And then we get to this point in our life and we're like, I'm really unhappy <laughs> or yeah. I'm feeling really overwhelmed and not, you know, not balanced and something's missing. Mm-hmm. Right. And we really stop to examine that and and have this self-reflection of where we are. And that can happen when we have that late diagnosis. Oh, absolutely. Right. And we start to think like, what do I want? What are my needs? What are my wants? What are my values? Right. And then that natural next step of how do we figure those things out? Well, now we have to be intentional. Right. right? And now we've got to kind of slow that busy brain down a little bit and, and do this and do the thing by um, doing some exercises and doing that self-reflection of, of unearthing who we are. Who are, who am I? What do I want? What matters to me? Um, I, I often tell new clients, like, you know, my job is if you don't already know where you want to go to help you figure out where it is that you want to go, what you want your life to be like, what you're moving toward, and then to bridge the gap in a practical way from where you are today to to where you want to be. But most of us with ADHD, we get to a point in our lives where we're just trying to keep our heads above the water. And, you know, we we stop thinking about those things. We stop paying attention to those things. And I think maybe the saddest you know, kind of most heartbreaking part of it from my perspective anyway, is that we stop believing that those things are possible for us. Right. Yeah. And I think that that naturally just kind of flows into that rumination, right? Yeah, that, right. That, um, that imposter syndrome or that rejection sensitivity that, mm-hmm. that we feel with ADHD, right. which can really start to give us this talk track before right. we know right? We've had this talk track for years telling us we're behind or we're not doing it fast enough. We're not doing it good enough. And we lose this belief in who we are in the world. Yeah. And this, this natural gift, everybody is given gifts. Everybody is given strengths and talents, right? Absolutely. But- Many of them, right? I know. I think of my little guy. He is just so blessed. Lynn, he has so many talents and strengths, right? And it's and I tell them, I'm like, these are important things you need to pour into, right? Yes, yes. And, it, and because he has ADHD and he struggles in these other areas, we lean very heavily on these strengths and these talents, right? That he is given. And instead of doing tutoring on, you know, English because he's behind, no, no, no. We pour into the sports because he's right. athletic gifted and he's so good right. at it. We right. pour into music lessons because he is so stellar at music. Right. So it's building up what we're good at and changing that talk track. Right. right. It's the the stuff that we are good at, the stuff that is a natural talent or a natural strength or a natural inclination for us is the stuff that we need to learn to lean on to help mm-hmm. us deal with, manage, you know, make the other stuff easier. But it's so often when you have ADHD, you're just focused so much on the stuff that everyone else makes look so easy that is not easy for you. And we tend to minimize the things that we're good at. We tend to not pay the attention to them. We definitely tend to not value them. And how many times, Heidi, have you heard an ADHD or say, kind of minimize their sort of um, disparate interests and abilities and talents by saying something like, oh, I'm a jack of many trades, but a master of none. Like Mm -hmm. a jack of many trades is not a bad thing, folks. You, I mean, the, the, the strange things that I've done, or the, I guess not strange, but the kind of disconnected things that I've done over the years, like, you know, for income, for one thing, different jobs that I've had, different talents, different, You know, I I used to own a bunch of rental properties that I managed myself and I did my own maintenance so I could hang the drywall and replace the toilets and, you know, some do some plumbing and do some electrical and all of that. And I, 
I used to sing a little bit professionally. Um, I used to write as a, um, a freelance writer, um, you know, and, and those things are all like not connected, but over time, I mean, it, it learning to appreciate that those things are strengths and they have values. And of course they, you know, everyone has them, right? I, I'm not the best handy woman. HGTV is not going to be knocking on my door, give me a show, but that's a talent. Those are strengths. Those are abilities that I had to learn to appreciate and, and to, to feel good about. I'm not your best filer. Like, you know, if you want your office, I mean, it's probably easier for me to do your filing than it is to do mine, but I'm not the best filer. You know, you, there are some things you just don't want me to do for you. And that's okay because I probably don't want to do them anyway. And that's right. okay, right? It's about recognizing what you're good at and accepting and appreciating that it has value and yes. owning that and not always just focusing on that gap between, you know, where you are and where you think you ought to be. Right. And even when just watching you, I know that the viewers are just listening to the audio, but just watching you and your excitement of all these things that you're great at. Right. And there's that process of figuring out these are strengths. Right. And a lot of the folks that um, I work with, and I'm sure for you too, they come to us not knowing what their strengths yeah. are. Because these are natural things that they're good at. I think of ADHD people are such good in conversation, right? We're spontaneous, we're energetic, right? This hyper-focus, there's a lot of things that se separate us in the sense of from our, our neurotypical peers and we don't recognize them. We don't right. even know that their strengths. I think right. in, in my coaching practice, one of the most beautiful moments that I love is hearing my client speak about things that they're really good at and, and taking that moment and being like, Hey, wait a minute. Are you hearing how yeah. great you are at this? And then realizing the look on their face is priceless when they're like, not, ev not everybody's good at that. Like I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. that's a strength of mine. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I, I, it, I often think back to when I was in college, um, and I'm trying to think of the roommate's name, but I can't think of it right now. I think it was my like my first semester freshman year in the dorm. My roommate would get frustrated because there was always somebody in our room kind of pouring their heart out to me, right? Mm -hmm. So she used to say that I, um, oh my gosh, I'm having a brain freeze, Heidi. Do you remember from the Charles Schultz from the Peanuts cartoons? Who was it? Was it Lucy that had the doctor is in the thing where where every, you know, people would come and pay her a nickel to, to have them solve her, their problems? We'll have to I just mean, go with that name. <laughs> right, who, I think it was Lucy. Sorry, guys, if I'm wrong. But, um, you know, who would have thought? I just thought that's just who I am. I mean, I'm just someone who like people pour their heart out to me in the grocery line or, you know, in the, the, at the bar while we're waiting for our table at a restaurant, you know, my husband's used to it after 35 years, people go deep with me and they go deep fast. Apparently I'm a good listener. <laughs> Apparently, you know, I'm empathetic, but who would have thought that that would have turned into a career path at some point that would have enabled me to help so many people over so many years, right? If I had just thought that was a quirk or a, you know, and I hadn't kind of leaned into that, I can't, I don't know where I'd be right now, probably still yeah. hanging drywall and, and that's okay too. But, you know, <laughs> it doesn't have to be, you know, some artistic ability or some, you know, other kind of, of um, the kind of things that we think of as strengths are, are often like innate abilities, mm -hmm. tendencies, you know, parts of who you are that you've been, you know, doing, or you've been showcasing, or you've been putting out to the world for so long that you don't even realize that that's different than what the rest of the world does and has. Yeah. Yeah. And that's such a good point, Lynn. And as, as you were sharing, I was thinking of before I knew that I had a strength in communication and, mm -hmm. and connection. And my boys from a young age, they were always just in awe of how I just was making so many friends, right? Mm -hmm. Everywhere I went, a grocery store, you know, Costco, wherever it was, I could just spark up a conversation so easy, very easily. And it wasn't until them pointing it out several times right. where I realized, oh, not everybody does do that, right? right? So it's like, 
Okay. But once I realized, okay, I have this strength of connecting and communicating with people and it's effortless for me because it's so natural. How can I use this? And how can I step into this more because it brought me great joy? But if I didn't know that and realize it, it would have just been on the back burner, right? Right. So it, it helped me step into, I ended up leading the greeting team at my local church. And oh my word, it was just amazing to just create and run this, this, you know, this group of people who got to be those first people that anyone that came to the church would see. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we see those strengths and we step into them, then all of a sudden we're not spending all this time trying to fix something, right? Because we're all going to have weaknesses and that's okay. It's, you know, you're not great. You're not great at filing. And I'll I'll tell you, none of my friends love me because of what a great filer I am, right? Right. Absolutely. You ask you ask the people who love me and know me best. That's never going to come up. Absolutely, and, and that's okay. <laughs> that's and right. that's just it. So when we step outside of, you know, trying to make that gap, as you said, yeah, and we start like realizing, oh, I'm good at this. Let me do more of that. Right. And not so much worry about all these things because the reality is, is if we were all good at everything, who would we need? No one, because we just got it all. We got it all figured out. Right. Right. And I think of even in partnerships um, and spouses, we get partnered with people who tend to have, you know, different strengths than us. And we come together and we're able to help each other. right? Right. And same is true with our kiddos and our friends and our colleagues. Right. When we have these weaknesses, we have opportunity to work together, um, bring out other people's strengths and let them in their greatness for a little bit as well and be in awe of them and their awesomeness. Absolutely. Absolutely. So anything you want to share with our listeners about how to uncover their strengths, their a better awareness of of, you know, who they are, what their values are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you asked that. Cause I think there's lots of things and I think everyone's different. Um, yes. And I always encourage everyone to figure out how do I best receive information? How do I best reflect? Is it writing? Is it pictures? Is it charts? I say charts cause I'm like a chart person. Give mm-hmm. me information. I need to make it into a chart. Right? I'm the same way. <laughs> is we're, it the, we're the unusual ADHDers probably with the spreadsheets, but anyway, go ahead. Yes. Spreadsheets <laughs> for everything. Um, But figuring out that piece about yourself as well. And then I've also created this living on purpose with ADHD workbook within it. You're going to hear and we're going to read a lot of the the things that we're talking about today, as well as exercises and tools. Yes, yes. Dig into and reflect on your core values and reflect on those strengths. And one thing I encourage you, if you get stumped and you're looking at this strength exercise and you're like, Oh my word. I don't know. I don't know what I'm great at. Yes. One that is close to you. Yes. Get them to do it on you first. Yeah. A lot of yep. time with my clients. I that's do that what a I lot. Do. Yeah. Yes. Find and, someone and my clients hate it. They hate that fieldwork assignment, right? They, most of them hate it, but yeah. it's really, it, it's to say that it's impactful is a gross understatement. To, yes, to, to it, read or to hear what someone else appreciates about you and how they see you, that's, I mean, that gives you, I mean, irrefutable proof of what you're bringing into the world. And that's, you know, th- that's your light. Those, those are your gifts. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So anything, I mean, I, I, we, I wanted to get into, um, talk a little bit about the kind of the thought patterns and how our, our negative thoughts and those, um, sort of, you know, there are lots of different things that we can call them, but those, those negative thought patterns can get in the way. Yeah. What a great, what a great way to, where direction to go, because we know that a lot of people with ADHD, we ruminate, right? Yes. So yep. I think, Lynn, to be honest, I think I could tell you every single, you know, comment that anyone has ever said rudely against me in my whole time. Oh yeah, Absolutely. Oh yeah, are, they're like etched in stone. But those ones that were positive, they seem to just get like lost, right? Yep. Our brain yeah. needs to focus on those ones that cause that deep emotional pain, right? Right. So, and the interesting piece about this is, is a lot of people don't don't know 
that we actually have the authority to control what we think. Yeah. We might not be able to control the thoughts that come in, but when we're self-aware and we recognize this thought is coming in and there's an exercise in the workbook for this as well, this thought's coming in, take a moment, recognize the thought, sit with it. How is this serving me? Right? Is this true? And if it isn't, and it's not serving you, how do I replace it? What is the truth that I want to put here? And what we do and what comes up for me is the affirmations, right? The reason why we're doing these things is we're creating new neural pathways in our brain, right? They're, They're a little overgrown at first, right? Like you think of like this wooded path and there's trees and you get go through it and you're getting scratched and cut up. But eventually by walking this path over and over, by telling ourselves true thoughts, true things that are empowering, that are building us up, that are enforcing our strengths and who we mm-hmm. are, that pathway becomes more solid. Absolutely. And within, and within no time, well, not no time at all. It takes a little bit of work. But once we get there, those new pathways become a lot more natural. Yes. And they become your your reflexive thought patterns. And that it's so, it it really is, It's it sounds... um. It, it it sounds a little woo-woo, I think, to some people who aren't really aware of it, but it, it's very practical. It's mm-hmm. very practical and it's very much like something that you apply on a regular basis, right? And if the word affirmation brings back the old um, sort smally, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like me, um, you know, comedy skit or whatever that was, you know, think about it as a, a slogan, a new thought pattern, a new, you know, a new truth if it's something that's moving you closer to what you want in your life closer to the life that you want for yourself i mean that's what it's really all about your brain is is wired to pay attention to things that reinforce whatever it is that you're focused on so if you ask yourself is this true your brain is going to look for proof that it's true so it's going to remind you of all the times that you screwed up that thing or all the times that there was something that resembled truth about whatever that thought is that made that become a belief over time anyway. So instead ask yourself, like, what proof do I have that this is always true, universally true, irrefutably true? Like there, you know, usually these things become beliefs. They become those like well-entrenched thought patterns because there's an element of I'm using my quotey fingers, you can't see. There's an element of truth to it that we then our brains again like hook on to that that proof there. Our brains find stuff to reinforce that that makes it feel like it's the, you know, the total reality when it really is just a piece. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's it's funny when we hear the word affirmation, sometimes we kind of like cringe inside. We're like, oh mm-hmm. right. And I roll, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the one thing I encourage all of the people I work with, don't just go online and print out some affirmations. No, you need to do your own. You need yeah. to make your own, right? Yeah. And you need to sit down and you need to think about your own. And one piece in addition to that, a lot of so the 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 clients I work with that their primary love language is words of affirmation. This mm-hmm. one's great because now what you can do is actually make flashcards based on compliments or yeah. key or things that you've heard from other people that are true statements about you, as well as um, making flashcards of affirmations that that you believe, right? That are actual truths for you rather than just the ones that you can go online and print off. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And they need to be yours and they need to be in a voice that, you know, they need to be in your voice and they need to be in a voice that you can start to believe, It's a little hard at first, right? It's a little hard at first to jump into, you know, um, you know, some of those affirmations that are just kind of general affirmations are like, it's a bridge too far, right? It's too much of a stretch. So I I don't know about you, Heidi, but when I was in coaching school, one of the things that they taught us to do with this sort of thing for clients was to find the positive opposite truth, right? So if you are telling yourself, um, oh gosh, Okay, walk back. I suck at filing, right? The positive opposite for that would be something like, I'm great at filing. Well, that would make me roll my eyes because I'm not great at filing. 
but you know, it, it could be something that, that's a little more comfortable and, but a little more in the right direction. I may not be great at filing, but I know how to do it consistently, or I may not be great at X, but I'm getting better all the time. You know, I may, I may not, you know, so you finding your sort of, um, What's the, how do I frame this when I'm teaching it or in my groups? Um, I, I call it your less aversive um, opposite statement, right? So if you have a, a, a knee-jerk reaction or a visceral response to an affirmation or something that you're trying to shift your thinking toward, then find something that moves you in that direction, but maybe not quite so far. Yeah, but it, It's part, I mean, you can start to move the path a little bit more gradually that way, and then it gets a little bit a little bit easier to travel all the time. Yeah. And even just tacking on to that, Lynn, noticing what that experience is like, right? Yes. When you find these affirmations and you're saying them, sometimes people stop because they're like, it just felt like uncomfortable. Yes. I didn't right. like right. it. Noticing what was uncomfortable about that. Yes. Because oftentimes what is uncomfortable about that is we're not used to telling ourselves awesome stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, it, so don't run from it. Right. Don't lean run into from it. it. Lean into it. Look at it. Right. Stare it in the eye. Talk, talk yourself yeah. through it. Think yourself yeah. through it. If you're a writer, write it down. If you're a verbal yeah. processor, you know, talk it out and record it as if you're explaining it to someone else just to help you make sense of it. Don't ignore it. Don't push it down. Um, don't say affirmations don't work for me. Like so many of us do, you know, lean into it, look at it and, you know, kind of find your way to do it. Absolutely. It's important stuff to look at, right? If we just push it down, ignore it, move on to something else. We're not resolving anything. Yeah, absolutely. This is such a, an interesting topic. And I, I think it's such an important topic for so many of us. Any last thoughts you'd like to share with our listeners? And then of course, again, like give, you know, tell our listeners where they can learn more about you, your website. Yeah. If anything else, I just, I hope that everyone just takes away that moment of self-reflection, that moment yeah. of intentionality in their day, in their busyness of day of, you know, the that, that catch up, that trying to, you know, get these things done, that we just stop for a moment and consider what would it be like to explore who I am a little bit further, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. And, and also, I think we didn't really touch on this a, a too much, but just having that gratefulness and that thankfulness of who we are, how we yes. were created, and how we are showing up in the world that in a way that makes us proud and in a way that aligns with who we want to be, right? So recognizing those things as well, because coming from a place of gratefulness in your heart can really just overflow into your whole entire life, right? It's huge. It's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, you can find me um, at lifecoachheidi.com. Uh, there's also a link in the show notes of the workbook that I've created for you guys to take advantage of. Please, please, please reach out when you've done the workbook, reach out just to connect with me and tell me what's coming up for you. What was challenging? What was easy and what you're taking away from doing the workbook? Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Heidi. I, I think this is going to be really helpful for a lot of people. If you have questions, comments, um, want to share your thoughts, you're welcome to join us in the ADHD Support Talk Facebook community and connect there. Of course, you can always comment on the episodes on YouTube and some of the other platforms as well as on our website. If you find the podcast helpful, please consider giving us a five-star review on iTunes. The more five-star reviews we have, the more other people can find us and get the ADHD support that they need as well. So thank you again for being here, Heidi. Thank you all for listening. As always, I appreciate your attention. We'll see you next time on ADHD Support Talk. Take care.